This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Awesome Chat is brought to you by Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. <laughs> Hey guys, it is the awesome chat. I'm Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And this is a show where we talk with some awesome people in and around technology and podcasting and all kinds of cool things inside and sometimes outside of Pittsburgh. Uh, I just give a little of that uh, uh, Steel City state of mind. But you can check us out. Please subscribe to everything starting at awesomecast.com. Subscribe to the awesome chat or the Sorgatron Media Master Feed where you can find this on your iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and of course, uh, video versions on the Awesome Cast YouTube and uh, and Facebook pages. And you know, every once in a while, we do stream the interviews, and you can join us on the main Awesome Cast every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time on that Facebook page for the Awesome Cast. And also, don't forget, don't forget to join us over at the Awesome Cast Facebook group uh, where we're sharing uh, stories and videos and games we're playing uh, throughout the week and a lot of other fun things going on there. Uh, so we had a good conversation uh, a few weeks ago with uh, Cindy Leonard about accidental techies, and now and now she's sending some fellow accidental techies uh, my way. Uh, Chrissy is with us in studio today, uh, Chrissy DeShetler, uh, and and you, you you've been labeled as one of these, I guess, right? I have. I think yeah, Cindy <laughs> was very quick to say, "Hey, you, you would be good at this." <laughs> so so tell us a little bit about your organization. Who who are you working with? Sure, I work for Family House. Mm -hmm. uh, we are a nonprofit organization in the Oakland and Shady Side area. We are currently operating 130 guest rooms. Uh, for patients and families who come to Pittsburgh for medical treatment, rehab, anything related to a, a medical reason that would bring you or your family to Pittsburgh. Um, it's about 50-50 between the patient staying with us before they would go over to the hospital for treatment or the family member staying with us while their loved one is in the hospital. And this is a situation where, uh, you know, basically anybody this half of the state would end up to Pittsburgh because it would be the locus mm -hmm. facility uh, that, that would handle certain things. We have reached to other countries and really? all 50 states in terms of our guests, yes, wow. who are coming and seeking medical treatment in Pittsburgh with some of the top-of-the-line medical care that's here in the city. That's right. We, there's a lot of breakthroughs coming. I know a lot yes. of, we're just talking wrestling, as we do around here, uh, and I know a lot of uh, uh, the WWE stuff is here in town when the people are getting cleared for like neck injuries and things like that. And mm -hmm. a transplant. Uh, there's a big piece of our history that's connected to the, trans the history of transplant in, in mm -hmm. the city and in the world. So uh, let's talk about this uh, kind of accidental techie. How did you, uh, now, now, what do you do with with your organization? And, and kind of tell me how you got there. Okay. Uh, so my title currently is Shared Services Manager. I oversee everything from payroll, IT, uh, reporting for the organization, um, development reporting, especially fundraising reporting. Uh, I was hired into the organization because of my background in a specific software program that the organization had that is the, the donor database, essentially. Um, and then from there, my position kind of changed. I uh, started there in November of 2009. So I've been there um, what, going eight years plus now. Um, and kind of, as with most nonprofits and anyone listening who works for a nonprofit or is aware of them, um, your, your job will ebb and flow with the needs of the organization. So as technology increases, uh, as, as people realize what other skill sets you have or mm -hmm. aren't afraid of, um, you take on other roles and responsibilities just to help, help the mission of the organization. Well, it seems like if you, if you get, uh, I think we talked about this before with Cindy, like if you like, Oh, Hey, I know how a printer works that leads into, well, can you do this in technology? Can you do this in online? Right. Yes. It, it kind of balloons out from there. Absolutely. Is that right? I, I think we call that mission creep on a lot of times on our <laughs> projects. Yes. If you're not afraid to turn it off and turn it back on to see if it works after that. Then. Yes. <laughs> you, you've been labeled as, Oh, you're the tech person. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic. So so how has that journey been for you as you're kind of growing into, uh, I guess, this expanded role here? It's been great. There have been a lot of wonderful projects. I have great support of 
of our board and the other staff that I work with, and it's a, a great team. Um, we've also had a lot of growth and, and demands and changes. Um, I think the Cindy had um, shared with you some information about a major project and how I first was connected kind of to the Bear Center um, back in uh, 2013, towards the beginning of that year. We were noticing a lot of just wear and tear on equipment. And this isn't um, unique to nonprofits, but you have a server and it near the end of its life and you have a bunch of workstations and they're all um, starting to crash on you and you're running four different versions of your operating system and things like, uh, like that that just start to creep up and you start to realize that they are affecting the, the operations of your organization. Um, so we had the opportunity to sit down with a committee of staff and board members and put out a request for proposals for rehauling our entire IT system. Um, it was a huge project. Obviously, we reached out to three different companies, got uh, bids and information, and ended up going a direction that I don't think any of us expected when we sat off on the project. Um, one of our, I guess, uh, the side note, one of our other challenges is we are working at that time out of five different locations. So you have a lot of um, doubling of resources there and just um, you need communication and speed. And there were a lot of T1 lines just connecting back to a physical server at the main location. Um, so in those proposals, we had a company come back with the idea of a uh, cloud-based si system, a completely cloud-based system. Um, at that time, we're talking four years ago now, it wasn't, it was still a, a relative. It was still scary. Newer. It was, it was scary. Yes. And it's like, what is this cloud? And exactly. is it reliable? Uh, and absolutely. right? Yes. A lot of questions so. about that. Um, some people on the committee um, who, who were board members who at bigger corporations who mm -hmm. had done some of that. So they could ask some good questions about the details of that and what they've experienced. Um, but after kind of, grilling the the company and going through all the details they were presenting it it seemed like it was something that would really work for us and mm -hmm. give us that freedom and and put some efficiency back into the the, the day to day operations of the organization yeah when implemented right because mm -hmm. i've seen i've known people that worked in some business environments where it doesn't seem to work out too well for them um but no if you have a pretty good managed system and i, I was reading here that uh you know, it was everything from you guys have thin clients. You're not you're not doing the computers there. You used to have tape backup. Absolutely, I feel and, like and myself and another coworker, we would uh, kind of trade. One day I would take it home. The next mm -hmm. day she would take it home. We forgot to do that. Uh, yeah. It it didn't end up offsite, and it also wasn't a system that was backing up the entire system. Yeah. One day it would yeah. back up one part of the system. The next day it would back up the other part of the system. So, so if something happened, you would lose like a day of a part of the system. Yes. It was not entirely. And you went to, of course, a kind of more managed, monitored online system. Yeah. And right? they're taking snapshots, I, I think, hourly in some cases. So, yeah, we, we can go back to lots of points in our system now. And I do like that, you know, there's a lot of, you know fancy cloud thing clients like the new like well, can we call it new age computing i guess a little bit you know to to an old old uh rusty uh non-profit that may be scary sound sounding but i see that you guys did go to like office 2013 instead of like this 365 thing correct yes and that was mm -hmm. more to help with the mindset um i always say there's there's a lot of psychology involved in it and mm -hmm. and you have your people who are going to be comfortable with change i mean yeah. change is always a big thing uh, and that decision was almost entirely based on it, it when our people logged into the new system they were clicking on something different but once they logged in it looked exactly like it did the day before the switch nice uh, so that was a big help with that piece of it that's good. And and uh, not a technology that's really <laughs> probably gone too far since 2013 when you think yeah. about it. Plus you're we, all... are, yeah, we are discussing now that next upgrade here soon, though. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the, some of the things we did in that transition um, coming to end of life with, mm -hmm. with Microsoft. Mm -hmm. um, so here soon, we're probably going to be having that next step. But, <laughs> but they, they're already used to all the other mm -hmm. new shiny. So you can add this little bit of like, finally, hey, we're going to take care of that office yes. for you guys. Yes. That's cool. And I think that's, um, you know, when 
you know, we talk about nonprofits, we talk about even older companies or the the hell we're talking about the church these days about changing their technologies, right? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there's a little bit of, well, this has worked for so long and change and everything. Um, How much resistance is there to get into the ideas of the cloud, you know, especially four years ago um, to these? Is it just more just this is the benefit of this? This is what we're losing now? Because I feel like, like, you know, they're, they're probably so ingrained they didn't realize how much they were losing just rebooting a crash system, right? Yes, and you don't, and and you'll create a workaround to make mm-hmm. to fix something, and then the workaround just becomes part of your daily routine, and you don't realize the inefficiency of it. Uh, so, it, I mean, it was definitely a scare. It's it's the fear of the unknown, mm-hmm. um, and um, kind of switching things over. We did things in small chunks. We started with the email server and got that up and running then had the day where we just had to flip the switch. Uh, we also, um, at the time, were switching to a completely web-based system f- that is the software that manages the guests who are staying, kind of like the reservation system. So that was a big piece of it as well. Um, and moving from a system that was housed in that aging um, server that was on site and then moving that to uh, a company that had a, a web-based system. So there was kind of three main pieces of that that were going on, uh, in addition to um, upgrading Wi-Fi access points at the houses that our guests use uh, when they're at the house and staying with us and need access to Wi-Fi. So other things like that were also going on at the same time. Is that the Cisco Meraki uh, system? Yes. I, I wasn't I wasn't clear on what that was. Uh, so that's the managed system we had. Uh, what were considered residential grade wireless access points at the time. And um, if an access point went down, you had to go and or the, the managers in the houses had to go and find it, unplug it, plug it back in. Um, That's the standard IT procedure. Exactly. Uh, no connection <laughs> between them, no way to, to know what yeah. was going on yeah. and kind of look at traffic flow. Each one was independent. The Cisco system is a completely managed system. I can log into a, a dashboard at any point, see that, what uh, usage is on the access points, Mm -hmm. um, reboot them if something goes down. It actually becomes one of my first line uh, of looking at things if, if, if the internet service provider goes down or something like that. That's where I know I can go and see that all the access points are down, then there's Mm -hmm. probably an internet problem. Mm -hmm. Um, So that was also a big change that happened that helped benefit our mission and the guests staying with us. And I know you do a lot of uh, work, you know, mm-hmm. you know, this is obviously this is uh, the article we'll share in the notes, of course, for this uh, show, if you guys want to uh, uh, check out the details of what we're talking about here. Um, but you, you also this is a presentation uh, with the Tech Now conference. I know you're involved with the, you know, in the uh, bites and bagels and everything. Yes. What are you seeing? Um, what are you seeing? How behind are nonprofits in technology, do you think, these days, like as a whole? I, I think it varies. I think. Um, each nonprofit who has an advocate who can really make these arguments and make and, and kind of um, put the information forward to say that it's and show that it's going to help the mission and improve things will um, get a little bit further. And, and again, it also comes back to were you the HR person who now is the tech person and you and you really aren't comfortable with it, or mm. are you the person who? actually might like computers and be interested in it. Those people can, can push it a, a little bit further. Um, and there, I mean, there are lots of great resources out there in, in how I came to, to you into this uh, podcast um, in locally, especially in the Bear Center N10, which is where that article was, was published. So I, th- I think people also just starting to rely more on each other and reach out to each other um, helps a lot as well to move things along and just, increase in technology Um, there are great products through google and other organizations that really knows know that the nonprofits need help and and see that uh, that need in the community is there a um is it helping that barrier a little bit because it seems like technology is becoming a little i guess kind of across the board user friendly people are everybody's got a tablet smartphone you know it seems these days is that helping bridge people over to the day-to-day technology you think for nonprofits I think it makes more of your everyday users a little more comfortable, Mm -hmm. but I also think that there are elements of, well, this is there. Why can't you just go get 20 of those and use them? That there's still that piece of it uh, that causes a struggle and, and um, 
obviously finances and budgets are always important to every company, but nonprofits are answering to funders and trying to stretch the dollar for their mission. So uh, it becomes still a little bit of, of a struggle there. Excellent. Any advice for anybody that's kind of in this this phase where they're they're looking at a five, six, seven, eight year old, maybe longer <laughs> technology uh, and uh, for their organization and need to kind of move to that next step? I, I'd say more advice for the for the people who those people are reporting to and that mm-hmm. and you need somebody to kind of take over and, and push these projects along. They, they will really help with the efficiency of your organization yeah. and your mission. Uh, and you, you don't want to get to that day. I, I share in the article a what could have been a scenario that we experienced uh, just a few months after we made this we made this transition in um, July uh, of 2013. And that that December, I, we got a call um, over the weekend. One of our employees had gone into the office and called us to say that the hot water tank that was on the second level of our office had burst. And that hot water tank was directly above the IT closet on the first floor. So what would have been our server with all of our data and everything sitting there would have been destroyed. Um, And and, and that old equipment was still sitting there and was destroyed. But luckily with the, uh, the technology and the cloud system that we moved to, it only took down the office. It didn't take down all of our other locations. And it provided, uh, it was a one piece of equipment swap on Monday morning and everything was back up. And that's an amazing argument for decentralization. <laughs> that, that's yeah. good. Yeah. So, so, so if you're having that problem, take this story, this <laughs> clip right here. We'll clip it out for you if, you, if anybody requests it. And when you just send that along to your manager and be like, is, is your stuff in the closet? Is there a hot water heater <laughs> maybe above that you don't know? A pipe could burst. You don't, you don't know. You don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> um oh i had a follow-up for that one uh no, no i think you mostly answered but, oh no there was one what, that, that kind of goes to that one thing you mentioned about um like these things it, i think i read that these things kept coming up in the budget but they kept getting like what was it, one of the companies didn't advocate enough for it and it kept getting pushed knocked off the budget every time i came around yes and i, I kind of wanted to handle that point um somewhat softly i mean i, yeah, I, I, yeah. I don't want to push blame i'm not pushing no blame no, no, on, no no on the company or but we, so there was a company there that was the it company and and i i will fully admit and anyone who works with a nonprofit, you you are always here well we're a nonprofit. we need to watch our budget yeah yeah and that person at that nonprofit is doing their job and trying to protect their organization and their their bottom line um but i, I think just kind of the the ignoring the problem on the organization side and the vendor not pushing and pushing and pushing to say, no, you really could end up with a problem here. Yeah, You're going to have yeah. to spend thousands and thousands, tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, so that uh, it, it built up over time. And again, yeah. get everyone in that routine and just was used to it. It's where it's not broke. Don't fix it. Mm-hmm. type mentality so it, until yeah. everything's broken <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much and of course uh involved in the tech now conference as well uh yes. the, the the bagels and bites uh, uh what, what's your involvement there are you just a, a, a participant bagels and bites yes i've been participating in that for probably about a year now and mm-hmm. then and i presented on this uh project at the um tech now conference a couple years back mm-hmm. um so the kind of the bear center has a lot of great resources classes con- consulting uh, all kinds of things available for nonprofits to at least especially bagels and bites just come around the table and ask questions and get some ideas that's great so that's great that there's there's that resource and, and everybody's getting together because i mean with with every venture that we've seen in technology it's always just let's get people together and, and see how they're solving these problems right yes so Excellent. Uh, where can people find out more about your organization? Is there anywhere that you have online that people can kind of pick your brain for uh, technology <laughs> things other than this great article on N10 that we'll link? Sure. Uh, familyhouse.org is our website to learn more about the organization. Uh, Family House Pittsburgh on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Um, a lot of great fundraising events coming up that support our organization. Um, I'm, I personally don't have a lot that I'm <laughs> involved. I'm not in so, uh, the social media, social media, um, platforms as much. Um, but I definitely will be attending bagels and bites. So, mm-hmm. um, the bear center's website and finding out those dates and, and getting that information will help people. 
There you go. Are there, are, is, uh, are there more articles out there from you or are you a Not, regular nope. contributor? This, was, this, the, is, this, this is the big has project. This the big project and then the, the big kind of following it over four years and nice. still being happy with the decision four years later. Good. Hey, a, that's, a good testament. that's the big thing. You'll yes. say, hey, that, didn't, that thing didn't catch on fire after <laughs> I left it. We're good. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us, Chrissy. Thank you for having and me. And of course, please check out all the great interviews, including the one we refer- referenced a lot with uh, 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 Cindy Leonard over at the Bear Center uh, for nonprofits. And, uh, and uh, with the technical conference and everything all of that is over there at awesomecast.com or in the uh, podcast feed if you're following us over there too uh, a lot of great conversations we've been having for the last few years if you have anybody you think that we should talk with uh, hit us up at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com or on our social media for uh, awesomecast on the Facebook or the uh, Twitter and, uh, and and please if you like what we're doing uh, please support the show help keep the lights on here in the studio at patreon.com slash awesomecast uh, we'll see you guys Tuesday 7pm Eastern on the Facebook page Page, uh, streaming live for the main show look out for the next awesome chat thank you to my awesome guest you've been our awesome audience have an awesome week this show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast network find out more at sorgatronmedia.com